The flames of the bonfire flickered brightly in the darkness. The hunter threw another piece of wood into the fire to keep it going. It kept the wolves away, and the undead did not seem to take an interest in flames. The summer night was cold, yet the fire kept him warm. As he looked up to the sky, he could see between the treetops there would be no rain this night. He grabbed his rifle to do the daily maintenance. Some oil would do it well and make it work perfectly for the task to come. Suddenly, there was a sound of a branch breaking to his left. In a split second, the Caldwell uppercut was out of its holster and aimed into the darkness. Who's there? Who's there? The hunter said with a raspy voice. All he could hear was the light breeze and the crackling from the fire. Do not be alarmed, stranger, a calm voice answered. I come in peace, and I'm unarmed. Step into the light, the hunter responded, not trusting whoever was hiding in the shadows. Very well. A tall figure came slowly forward, his hands open and empty. May I join you by a fire? Who are you? The hunter asked, still pointing his revolver at the newcomer. Oh, just a wanderer. By the name of Joseph Wilkins. He looked like a man in his late fifties. Gray hair, dark clothes, and a cloak that went all the way to the ground. The hunter pulled back his revolver, pointing it upward. I'm John Miller. How did you pass my traps without triggering them? Oh, I, I saw your traps. They're effective against the undead, I'm sure, but I'm not so easily fooled. I've been walking these forests for a long time. Keep an eye out for his dangers. May I sit? John nodded, keeping the gun in his lap as a precaution. It had been three days since he entered the woods, and he had seen no sign of any humans. Only wildlife and the dreaded undead who roamed the area. He had cleared out every walking dead nearby before setting camp, but one could never be so sure if more would show up. Judging from your equipment and the fact that you're in this specific location, I take it you're here for the bounty. You know about the bounty? Or you know about the bounty? And you my competition then? John had a suspicion in his voice. No, as I said, I'm just a wanderer. But I might be able to help you. I don't need any help. This was not John's first hunt. Bears, rabid dogs, wanted criminals. They all had gone down with a solid bullet to the head. Hell, even the raised dead could not withstand that. Uh, is that so? Joseph replied. As a hunter, I'm sure you know how important it is to know your prey. What do you really know about this creature? said the wanderer. Well, I know it's a big spider. Last seen half a day's north of here, said Joseph. They want it gone, and they pay handsomely to anyone who take it down. And I'm not gonna let anybody stand in the way of me collecting that bounty. As I said, I'm not here to compete with you, said the wanderer. That's not much information you got there. Yeah, they, they didn't have any more. What if I told you I'd killed it before? <laughs> then I'd say you didn't do a very good job, John answered dryly. <laughs> yeah, I have to confess. In the beginning, I was pretty bad at it. But I learned. I can tell you my story, and you can do what you want with it. Discarded as some old man's mumbo-jumbo. Or use the knowledge to your advantage. He was still unsure if this person was trustworthy or just some madman walking the woods unarmed. Go on, then. Almost 30 years ago, in the year 1876, I was a young investigator, and I was to check out a case of a missing family who lived on a farm south of Louisiana. When I and my colleagues got there, found them, they were all dead drained of blood and wrapped up in cobweb for storage. And that wasn't the most horrible thing we saw that day. In the barn, we found the creature. It was 
obliged to support an insane fast. He had to call in reinforcements. We took it out with him. That was one hell of a fight. Two men died that day. Three more were wounded. But the Spanish seemed dead. It was not. We buried the horrid body behind the barn. But the day after, we found that the creature had crawled out of its grave and disappeared. We had to track it down again and kill it one more time. We were more careful. Managed to do it without human casualties. To be sure, it did not return again. We burned the carcass and buried the ashes. Even that wasn't enough. It was spotted a week later down on the harbor feeding on a helpless fisherman. First we thought it was a different animal altogether. First, we thought we were dealing with another spider. But later we learned that was not the case. And I won't bore you with the details, but my investigation led me to Bow Bridge, a small town about 10 miles from here. There, in the house of a man called George Conley, I revealed the terrifying truth. It appeared that Conley was an occultist, experimenting on his own in his basement of his house. Dead animals and old books were all over the room. Conley's writing revealed that he had been dealing with the summoning of a demon. After several failed attempts, he finally managed to open the portal for a demon he had been communicating with to pass through. That was a mistake. The demon, whose name was Ramesh, possessed Connolly. It was the only way it could stay in our realm. The possession process kept going for days. The writings of Conley's got stranger and stranger as madness overtook him. He managed to draw simple drawings of his visions. They could only be described as anything but horrible and perverse corruptions of reality. The demon must have been feeding on his fears. From later conversation with Conley's family members, I found out that he was suffering from arachnophobia. Damon transformed him into what he feared most. At that point, I had to study the occult myself to better understand what we were dealing with and how to defeat such a creature. From what I understand, Conley had no control over what happens anymore. He's just brought along for a ride. Has to witness all the terrible things that the demon does. That is a feat worse than death. I came to understand this when we encountered and killed him for the third time. His head is still part of the spider's body, and I could see the fear in his eyes as the creature blood out in some abandoned ruins outside a boat bridge. Up front, we prepared a banishing ritual. I made sure he stayed dead. It worked. At least for a while. It took over 10 years before we saw anything from that monster again. But we managed to banish him a second time. Now it looks like it's your turn. That is one incredible story, Wanderer. If you don't banish him and he shows up a few days later, do you think you're going to be able to collect the bounty? Asked Joseph. 
But I know nothing about this banishing. It's not really hard. It's not really hard if you know his name. Joseph pulled out a small bottle from his breast pocket and handed it over. Pour this liquid over his carcass and recite his name. The banishing process will begin. John looked at the little bottle. Several small symbols were carved into the glass. I guess I'll give it a try, he said, and put it in his own pocket. John, I hope you're a really good shot. Mm -hmm. 